Hello friends, welcome to session one of Mastering SSL Keys and Certificates. So before I start with the session, let me come uh, first cover what all are the topics that we are going to cover in this course. Okay, so the different topics that we are going to cover in this course are keys, what is the difference between SSL and TLS, end-to-end -end browser to server flow with respect to the SSL and TLS, what is the role of different keys, public and private keys, symmetric and asymmetric keys, cryptographic algorithms, identity and trust, certificates where we have a different kind of a digital certificate, self and certificate and certificate authority certificates, and then SSL and TLS handshake process. What are the different key stores? For example, JKS and PKCS still key stores. How to create uh, the JKS key store and how to import, export or delete the certificates from that particular key store. How we can create the .PKCS12 uh, key store and how we can import, export, delete the certificates from that key store. Along with that, the Oracle wallet. So Oracle wallet is a proprietary term that is uh, from the Oracle, okay, which is also used to store uh, the different certificates and the keys, just like the JKS and PKCS12. So these are the topics that once you uh, will cover the course, okay, you will be master on all these topics for sure. And I'm going to explain all of these topics with complete details and with end-to-end -end real examples. Okay, and in a simple way, so that anyone can understand all these topics. So in the industry, so SSL and all these topics are considered as one of the complex topics, which is also, okay, because it contains a lot of uh, basic knowledge to be clear. And if you're not clear on the basic concepts, and then you will always get confused on all these topics. Okay, so once you have a complete clarity on all of the basic uh, fundamentals, then you will get the complete understanding of all of topics. Okay, so let us begin with the session. So what we are going to cover in the first session is about the keys. Okay, and we'll, uh, we'll see the role of the keys. Okay, so whenever we access any of the website which is secured, okay, then we access that website with the help of HTTPS, right? So that means if we access a website, okay, with the help of HTTPS protocol, and if we are not getting any prompt, any kind of a risk or security prompt when we are accessing the uh, of a particular website, that means that website is secure okay so now what does it mean is secure we'll we'll check it in detail right so now if you click on the lock icon which you can see in just adjacent to https okay then you will see a pop-up box and then here you will see a connection is secure right with a lock icon so you can click on the lock icon or this option which is saying connection is secure okay and then you will get an option to view the certificate okay so click on the certificate button and then you can see the certificate so now here you can see that the first section showing is issued to, second is showing issued by, and third is showing validity period, and then next one is showing some SHA-256 and fingerprints. Okay, so we'll see everything in detail in, in this course, what exactly it means when we talk about the certificates. So what exactly is the meaning of certificates? What are the different certificate authorities, those uh, release the certificate? What is the format of the certificates? How we can import, export them in the different key stores? How we can configure the key stores? Okay, so now here in this certificate, you can see that this certificate is issued to Amazon.com. Okay, and this certificate is issued by the DigiCert. Okay, and the validity period of the certificate from November 28, 2023 to November 12, 2024. Okay, so after that, once that period is expired, the Amazon has to renew the certificate. That means they have to apply a new certificate from the DigiCert again. They have to pay the renewal fees. And once they will receive the new certificates, they have to import it again in the key store. Okay, so that their website be secured. And then below, you can see the fingerprints of the, the certificate and the public key. Right. And if you click on the details, then you will see the different certificate details that uh, the Amazon has configured, which they have received from the DigiCert. So that means whenever we want to secure a website, right? So that means for that, we need a certain kind of a certificates, right? And that certificates need to be imported in the key store that we configure for the website, right? So as of now, in this session, we are going to discuss about the keys, okay? So we'll cover the certificate in uh, details when we go in the certificate session, right? So now let us talk about the SSL. So SSL secure socket layer is a technology used to secure the data transmitted over the internet by encrypting it. This ensures that sensitive data information like password, credit card numbers, and personal data remains private and secure during transmission. That means whenever we access any of the website, okay, with the help of HTTPS over the internet, okay, so that means that data 
is get encrypted. The data, the data is get encrypted whenever it's transferring from your browser to the data center of the organization, which website that you are accessing. For example, if you are going to access some of the website of your bank, okay so whenever you access the website of the bank from the web browser which is on your system the website is get displayed to you okay from the data center of that particular bank right and whenever you enter any of the information in the website for example initially you enter the username and password right so that username and password get transferred to the data center of that particular bank over the internet right because you are connected to the data center with the help of internet which is a public network so now when your data is getting transferred from your web browser to the data center of that particular bank over the internet, that data need to be encrypted so that your data should not be compromised in between, right? So this is the technology which is called the SSL, okay, which is used to encrypt the data when it is traveling over the internet over the public network, okay? Even for, you can configure it for the intranet as well, okay? So that means whenever your data is transferring or moving in the network, then you have to encrypt the data for security reasons, for that, we use the SSL, okay, which is called the secure socket layer, right? Now, let us take a deep look on the flow, okay? Suppose that you are accessing a website from your web browser, okay? So, initially, when you access a website, for example, you access a website xyzbank.com, okay? And for that, the request will reach to the internet, right? Because you are connected to the internet. From internet, it will reach to the data center of that particular bank from where okay the website will get displayed on your browser and then the first thing that you have to provide when you are going to log into your net banking you have to provide the username and password right so that username and password that you are going to enter in the website when again it is going back to the data center okay it will reach to the data center with from the internet but the data will be encrypted Okay, so for example, you have entered the username as Digitalk and the password as Digitalk123. And now you can see on the screen in red, okay. So when it gets transferred from the internet, okay, it is converted in some garbage format, okay. And then it will reach to the data center, right. So once it is reached to the data center, it will again get decrypted in the values, correct values, so that your server can, your application or server can understand it properly, right. And again, once the server validated your username and password and it is again going to send back the response to the browser okay so it will again encrypt the information and that information again from data center to reach to your browser from the internet and while the data which has been uh, transferred or sent by the server to your browser it is again encrypted when it was traveling over the internet and when it is reaching to your browser then again it will be decrypted Right. So this is the work of your SSL, which is used to uh, encrypt the data, which is transferring over the network from your client to the server so that your data should not be compromised. So the data which is get encrypted in between what is in transfer, this is called a ciphertext. Okay. And why it is in ciphertext? So that it should convert into the junk format when it is traveling over the internet. And in between, if someone try to compromise your data from the internet, right? And that time, that person will get only the garbage data. He will not able to or she will not able to understand the garbage data that is which is getting transferred over the internet. Okay. So now this encryption, which is happening at the browser side, and then we are saying that the data is getting decrypted at the server side. And again, it is getting encrypted while it is sending back to the browser. So that means whenever the data is getting transferred between your client and the server, the data will get always encrypted. Right. For example, when you log into your internet banking website, the first thing that you, as I said, you have to provide the username and password, right? So that username and password will get encrypted once it reaches to a server. Now, during the uh, uh, your uh, login to the website, okay, you can do a lot of operations. You you may have to apply for certain kind of a loan. You may have to pay uh, certain kind of a amounts from, or you, you may have to do the uh, the, uh, the transfer of the amount. So you can do a lot of kind of a transactions over the. Uh, website right so whenever you hit the button or whenever your uh, your transaction needs certain kind of a data or which needs the interaction with the backend application which is the data center so all the time your data will get transferred over the internet so whenever the whatever kind of a data during your session is getting transferred over the internet to your server it will always get encrypted and decrypted at the server end 
Okay, so while it is traveling over the internet, it is in the encrypted form. And again, when it is reached back to the server, it will again decrypt it. Server will perform the response. And when the server will send the response back to the browser, this will again get encrypted, which I said, this is called a cipher text, right? So now when we say that this kind of a encryption and decryption is happening at the server side and at the client side, right? Browser in the server side. So how this encryption is happening? So for this encryption, we use different kind of a keys, okay? So we'll talk about all these keys, okay? What are the different kind of keys that use for the encryption and decryption of the data and how it works? And then later we will see how we can configure the different key stores and then how we generate the different keys and how the keys are actually participate in this kind of a conversation between server and the client when the data is getting transferred over the internet, right? So now the two things are very clear, which is called the encryption and decryption. The role of SSL is for the encryption of data, which is getting transferred over the internet between server and the client, right? So now we'll discuss on the keys, okay? Because we, what we said is that the keys take participate in the such kind of a encryption and the decryption, right? And now apart from that, what we are saying that, that apart from that or the SSL, what I have written is a TLS. Okay, so we have a one or two few more slides later part on this to discuss in detail. So now what you can understand if you are confused between the SSL and TLS. So just like SSL, TLS also a cryptographic protocol designed to secure communication over a network by encrypting data while ensuring the integrity and authenticity of message. The functioning is same as SSL and it is a successor to SSL and provide improved security for data transmitted between clients and servers. So now this is a successor of SSL. SSL is old and absolute. So now, because the, since the beginning, the term has been referred as an SSL. So we always refer it as an SSL, not TLS. But the latest version of the SSL is the TLS, which is the transport layer security. Okay. And you can say TLS and SSL both are same. And But TLS is a successor and the latest and advanced security option for the data encryption and decryption over the network or to make the data secure over the network. Okay, this is the only difference between SSL and TLS. Now we will talk about the public and private key. So we have a four type of keys when we talk about the encryption of the data. The two keys are public and private keys. And then we define the two more terms for the keys, symmetric and asymmetric keys. Okay, so first we will understand what is public and private keys. Then we go to understand the symmetric and asymmetric keys. And then later we will see the role of all these keys when the data is get transferred or communicated between the browser and the server, right? So let us discuss first with the public key. Okay, so let us understand the public key with the help of real life analogy. Okay, so you can consider public key as an open mailbox. So now what is it? it? The public key is like an open mailbox that anyone can use to drop it letters. It's accessible to everyone. Like, for example, you have a pub, uh, mailbox, right, in the public. You can see that a lot of places in the mailboxes, right? So what is the use of this mailbox? Anyone, whoever want to send the letters to the destinations, anyone can drop the letter in the mailbox, right? But it is protected with the key. No one can able to open that apart from the end user who is authorized to open that particular mailbox to collect the letters, right? So that means the public key is like an open mailbox that anyone can use to drop in letters, but it is accessible to everyone, right? It is accessible to everyone. So how it works? If you want to send a secure message to someone, you put your letter in this open mailbox. So what you can do, you can write a letter, you can close the envelope, you can seal it and then you can write the address and you can drop in the mailbox, right? But now, since the mailbox is open to everyone, so anyone can put a letter in it, right? But no one can take a letter out without the special key. That means it is locked with a lock, okay? And only the authorized person can open and collect the letters. But apart from that, for gen generic public, it is only allowed to drop the letter inside the mailbox. So this is something like a public key, okay? Which is available for everyone. Everyone can drop the letter, okay? But no one can able to open this mailbox. Right. So in practice, on the internet, the public key is used to encrypt or log the information you want to send. So now, similar to the mailbox, which is a public mailbox in terms of dropping the letters, public key is used to encrypt or log the information you want to send. So public key is always used for the encryption of the data. 
right? So we have a server and we have a browser and what we are sending saying that we have to encrypt the data at both of the end, right? So when the browser is sending the data back to the your backend data center during the communication, it will encrypt the data with the help of public keys. So now how the public key reach as the browser level? Because what I'm saying is that your browser encrypt the data with the help of public keys. So we'll see that one, how the browser get the public keys for the encryption of the data. But what now, what, what you have to understand as of now is your, your public key is just like a public mailbox. Okay. And this public key is used to encrypt the information or you can say encrypt the data. Anyone can use this public key because this, the name is said that is a public key. That means it is available for everyone. Everyone can use this public key to encrypt a message. But when the message is encrypted, only the person with the private key can unlock or decrypt it. It is similar to the mailbox where anyone can drop the letter, but only the authorized person who is having the key of the mailbox can open the mailbox and collect the letters. Similarly, if you have a public key, which is specifically designed for the public and which is getting used for the encryption of data. So anyone can use that public key and, and can encrypt the data. But once the data is encrypted, only the authorized user can able to decrypt that data with the help of private keys, right? So now we have two keys. The public key is getting used for encryption of the data. Okay, anyone can have access of it, but private key is name implies that this is a private key, right? So this is maintained by an authorized organization who is the owner of that private key. It is example like, like you have a, a key of the mailbox, which is with the postman, right? So similarly, the private key is used to encrypt, decrypt the data, which is get encrypted with the help of public key. Okay. And it is used or secured in a proper place by the organization who owns this. Okay. So this is a real life analogy for public key. Now, again, let me explain it again in terms of private key, the special key. So what it is, the private key is like the special key to the mailbox. Only the owner of the mailbox has this key. So similar to the mailbox, only a postman who is the owner of that particular mailbox can have a key. Uh, who can open that particular box and collect the letters, right? So on, once your letter is in the mailbox, only the owner, the person who has a special key can open the mailbox and read the letter. No one else can access the letter inside, right? Because no one has the key of the mailbox. Similarly, in practice, the private key is used to decrypt or unlock the information that was encrypted with the public key. And only the person with the private key can read the secure message, right? That means whatever the information that has been encrypted with the help of public key specifically at the browser end okay it will reach to the server via internet in the form of garbage and once that information is reached to the server your server has a private key right and that private key will decrypt the information that has been received from the browser right so this is the work of your public and private key so now what we have learned here is whenever the data is getting transferred between the browser and the server, the information is get encrypted always in the both direction, right? And for that encryption, what we use, we use the different keys. And so far, what we have learned, we have two different kind of keys. One is the public keys. Second is the private keys. And what is the role of public and private keys? A cryptographic public key is a cryptographic key that can be shared openly and is used to encrypt the data. So public key is encrypting the data. And when we talk about the private key, a private key is again a cryptographic key kept secret because it is a private and used to decrypt the data. So the data that has been received by the server from the browser is encrypted, decrypted with the help of private key, right? So that means the encryption is happening with the help of public key at the browser end. And at the server end, the decryption is happening again with the help of private keys. Right. So this is all about the, the SSL, a bit introduction to TLS. Okay. And then the, the keys, the role of public and private keys in the SSL communication. Thank you.